Osaka Fet English Creole. It's widely used. It's the main language on the island, so you'll have a lot of people using it. The French Creole. It is endangered, and we have a few speakers left. And usually, when this last speakers of a language dies, then that language dies too. Only young people, young couples even, who are just starting their families. So this is where we can find that there might be a focus on NIDAS for the revitalization of that language. It's part of our history, it's part of our culture, and a language is not just for communicating. A language embodies the history as well. So you'll have a lot of knowledge in Creole, in Patois, that if it dies, the knowledge dies with it. But you see, I make a distinction between a Creole that might be in danger of disappearing versus a Creole that is alive and well. Now, there's a different question that could apply to a Creole that is alive and well. A Creole that is alive and well might be the first language of students, and perhaps it may not need to be taught in school per se, but maybe it needs to be used in schools in order to teach. It is my belief that Creole should be taught in schools because students will learn better if their first language was being used. This, be, this is because it gives us a sense of national pride and a sense of belonging, seeing that our first language is being used in a formal educational system. We try to get the younger people involved. So one of the ways we do that is to go into schools and to teach a language. We also have quizzes or primary school quizzes. So every year we'll have um, primary schools competing against each other based on the Creole language. So we'll have, we'll send out teachers into the schools, they'll teach them different parts of the language and they'll come together and we'll have a national quiz. We also do things like Creole Mass where we'll have the entire mass being done in Creole and realize that we have a lot of speakers here, Creole speakers here, even people from St. Lucia or Dominica, and those Creoles share similarities as well. It's probably inevitable because it would normally be spoken by the subjugate peoples. And as a result of that, they, would, they could easily be stigmatized since their language now may not be as seen as 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 um, having the same status as a dominant language. <laughs> it's gotten a lot more positive in recent years, and Creoles in general, even in the Caribbean or around the world, they generally have that negative stigma. First of all, it's a stigma that it's not a language, it's broken, it's just broken English or broken French, but linguists will tell you that it is a language. From my 15 years of education, I have been taught that Creole is not a language and that the only official language in our system is Standard English. This is because many people believe that Creole is informal, improper, and inappropriate. Because what really makes a language is a system of rules and when you study Creoles you realize that there are rules with the sounds, the way the words are put together, the meaning. At every level of language that you'll find in standard French or standard English you'll find that in Creoles as well.